Hello again, uh, Pete here. Uh, this is my first real update on the 1968 Chevrolet El Camino SS from AMT. Um, as many of you know, I so sent off the little derby car go-kart thing um, over to Doug a little while ago, which left me with the car, and I thought, well, I'd better build it. But before I get onto that, really, I'd just like to mention... Rick Zink, really, and I I just can't comprehend the loss that that man must be going through at the moment, and I think it's it's a horrendous situation for the p poor fellow, so I'd just like to say that my prayers and thoughts are with him at this moment, and it's an absolute terrible situation, poor man. I, I can't imagine what it'd be like to lose a child like that. Um... So there we go, um, I'm very sorry about your loss Rick, and thank you for your support, you must have been one of the first people that signed on to my channel. Hmm. Very sorry. <clears throat> anyway, back to this here um, Camino. Um, I've been working on on the main chassis and suspension, as you can see. I mean, I've uh, been playing around with my tyres. I'm probably going to have to change, change. Well, I've changed these tyres from the Bridgestones I had the other day, but I think I've got to sand these down a little bit if I'm uh, sand the wheels down if I'm going to use these. But or we'll have another rummage and find something fatter. I don't really want to end up with the. Uh, Red ball, red stripe ones that come with them, uh, just because I like changing things. And there I've I've gone around and added the uh, added a valve in there and a bit of a black wash. I haven't done it very heavy on the black wash. I make my own washes and then I can sort of uh, judge the intensity of them. And I just wanted a just a light, not really, really heavy. So it's more of a very dark grey than it is a black wash. Um, lean that back against me, Jack. Um, as, oh, bugger. Nearly knocked, knocked a lot everywhere. Um, as you can see, there's bits of bits of wire sprouting out. So, I mean, I've gone there. Uh, can't get this high enough, really, can I? Let's lift it out in the little carriage there. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, got some cables dangling out of it. And I found a, a, a black braided uh, cable in, in the same sort of bead area of craft shops, but this one's black. And then on the upper side, I've got the two two braided silver hoses which I'll, I'll crimp together and have one feed off as the pipe these two are for the emergency uh, break and I've uh, replaced the fittings up on the top because I'll uh, add my own torque arm into there along with the rear springs and that and I've been drilling around I don't know whether the, any of these holes are there you go little hole at the back. I went round drilling these outriggers and things to go for a racy look. That back chassis rail, cross rail there. Where else? You know, down there. Um, and, you know, drilled all me, put all my valves in and that. Um, I also made up a load of Load of new shock absorbers for it. This one's one of the rear shocks, which is I don't know. I don't know. That's too dark. I'm in a shadow there. Oops! Wave it all around a bit. There we go. All right then. Set off of that. And as you can see, this is, this actually is is made from a piece of sprue, then a piece of tube, and that area there is the sprue poking all the way through, then another piece of tube 
or sprue again that I've drilled into and plugged that into and then a, a ring piece of tubing on the top with a pin through it that will go into my rear shock mounting on the back of the uh, axle that's the lower shock mount and then that will run up into the into the body of the car um, so we've got those there for the <coughs> oh, excuse me for the back this one's the other back one I've trimmed it down a little bit more um, I'm not going to mess around with them because I painted them the other no, earlier and these ones oh, that's, that is dry just picked them up by it the same same technique again that is basically dry enough to take out of there it's basically a, a piece of sprue a piece of a little slice of tubing there and then another sleeve of tubing up to the top and it's a pin that will locate actually this is a front shock absorber and it will go I've drilled out the hole there so as I can insert my painted shock absorbers into the spring at the last moment I think not that you're going to see much of any of it but there you go you know so that's what I do there and then trim that down uh, to suit let's draw that um, and there's two of those so that's both the front and rear shock absorbers of the scratch made the mountings on there are the springs are uh, I've taken the these uh, torsion bars off of I don't know what it was it was a, a chrome sprue that I bought and a little uh, Von Dutch buggered eye flying eye on the back rail there so that's that for the uh, for the chassis um, still not happy with that tire I don't know what I'm going to do hopefully find a slightly fatter one because I've worked on all the inner arches all the inner fenders of the front of the car to give me space and I nearly got the Goodrich tires I was going to use and oh, there's the empty sway bar I've had to alter that a little bit with a piece of angle to pack that out to meet with those chrome bars I've got underneath. Um, yeah, I nearly got those Goodrich tyres in, but they're just a tad too, too fat, and it's just not worth any more attempted destruction of the car to fit them in. So at the moment I'm using those, but I'll probably end up with the, the uh, ones that came in the kit, really, I think, because they are slightly broader than these. Oh, I could sand down the wheel again. Also, uh, um, another thing with wheels, um, I often find that the the tyres, I mean, these these aren't really, oh, no wind, but the Goodrich ones were, were loose. So I cut up little s scraps of scrap, I don't know if we need to see that on there, hopefully you can, right, and glue them around the rim there, and then the tyre will, will just fit on a lot more firmly. And as I was using different tyres, I ended up doing it. I thought I'd done it on there at all. No, it must have been that one, just the back ones. On the chrome rim. Yeah, that's basically what I've done for the wheels anyway. And with the valves, I, I stretch some sprue over a candle so as I've got a little tapered piece. Uh, drill a little hole where I want it. Not necessarily all the way through. Sometimes I do and come in from behind it. In this case, there's just enough to get a little dimple there. Um, hold an off-cut bit of sprue in, in a pair of tweezers and dob it into your, your cement, into, into the hole. And you can trim it down after it's set, you know, you could leave that half an inch long, you know, out here so it didn't hold it easier, glue it in place, wait for it to set, and then go in with your side cutters and go, Dick, or whatever, you know, and just snip them off and trim them down. But I actually like to get a domed effect over with a bit of heat to represent a cap. That's it, how firmly have I got these back ones on? 
this is really I shouldn't no I'm not gonna bugger about with that that's why I end up breaking it um but anyway you know it's just basically a, a bit of stretch sprue popped in there and it give you that valve detail and if you can find an old kit that's made out of black plastic to keep all, all the sprues anyway that's about it for this one um Oh, there was um, a bit more of a note on actually doing the springs and that and, and measuring it out. I always measure what the, the original part was and to what I'm then going to make, you know, um, on from that. You know, because then then you've got you've got some idea of where it should have been in the first place. Like I say, I mean, the shocks that are original parts were 12 mil eye to eye and, and the ones I've just made, uh, these ones are going to be 15, so I've, I've added 3 mil to the ride height of the back of this car. Bounce at the moment, a little bit. Um, you know, so all, all those will add up and that, and while you're making them, you've got to get these actually equal, otherwise you'll be askew when you when you uh, put it together. But that's just, just measure carefully. Like I always say, oh, and then uh, the fuel cell was meant to go... The fuel tank was meant to go to the bottom of the pickup bed part. It's just moulded of the chassis part. And I've uh, infilled round here and added a top top to the, the tank with some uh, you know, like, uh, lacy looking fuel fit in there. That part there, the fuel pipe is drilled for the fuel pipe and that will go to that little pump there or whatever and then out again. And also patched in quite a lot of the frame around here, uh, up and over there and all around the back because it was all, all channeled and I, I don't know really what I'm doing with this kit so I don't know how much is going to end up visible. But it's o only a few strips of um, styrene and for this sort of thing I, I, I buy a whole sheet of styrene and I've got a sort of... Um, it's it's like a, a sliding blade thing. I'll show it to you when I think about it next. But it's for stationary, for trimming down card. And you just run along a strip, and I can cut a 2 3 mil strip, um, which this actually was something like 3 mil by the look of it, and use it to, to do a load of stuff. And it's far, 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 far cheaper than buying Evergreen or anything that's actually cut for the, the width of this. And also with this piece... I laid a whole panel that was a rectangle over that and then once it had stuck on, trimmed it all to the actual shape of the chassis. So I ended up with a shape there and a off cut there, which I then trimmed down to make something else. I don't throw it in the bin. It all goes into a you know, uh, food canister thing, tub, and, and I rummage around in there before cutting other pieces like, like those little bits of plastic I added there. That would have been an off cut from... Uh, from doing something like that. That really tightens the wheel grip up on on the tyre. Anyway, that really is it. Uh, hope it hasn't run on for ages. I'm not Doug. Uh, see you later. <laughs> That's Richard from jolly old England. <laughs>